Hey, what's going on guys? In this video, we're gonna set up a Linux server, an Ubuntu server from scratch, and we're gonna be deploying a MERN stack app to production. Now, there's a lot of different ways and there's a lot of different services that you can use when it comes to hosting, and there's certain platforms that can take some of the work out of it for you. However, the downside with that is you don't have complete control over the server. So I really want to just dive in here and not just show you how to quickly deploy a, a MERN app. This isn't like a, you know, deploy your app in two minutes type video. We're going to create a server. We're going to set up some SSH keys, um, create a user. We're going to get our files onto the server with Git. We're going to set up Nginx. We're going to set up uh, a process manager to run our node app. So it's going to be maybe 30, 40 minutes. And as far as a server, we're going to be using Linode, which is a cloud hosting provider. And we're going to set up a Linux Ubuntu container. Although if you want to use a different distro, that's fine. Uh, I'll be using Ubuntu and Linode is actually sponsoring this video. However, the process is the same for any Ubuntu server, whether it's uh, from some kind of cloud service or your local machine, whatever it is. And we got Linode to give us a 60 day $100 credit so that you can follow along with me absolutely free. Um, you'll get to use Linode for a couple months. You can experiment, install whatever you want on your servers. So uh, you can, again, use that, use your own machine, use a different service, whatever you'd like. So I just want to just quickly go over the plan for this video. I do have a gist in the description that has absolutely everything. It's basically a text version of the video. It has all the commands we're going to run. So you can use that as kind of a supplement. But just to quickly go over the plan here, first thing we'll do is set up a server. And again, I'll be using Linode with the uh, Ubuntu distro. But if you want to use something else, that's fine. Then we're going to set up some SSH keys. So we have to generate some keys on our client machine and we have to add the public key to the server. And we're going to log in using SSH keys as opposed to um, using just the password. All right, then we're going to create a new user because I don't want to use the root user. So I'll show you how to create uh, a new user for the server. Then we're going to get our app files onto the server using Git. And the application that I'm going to deploy is the goal setter app that we built in the MERN series that I did about two months ago. Uh, if you want to deploy something else, that's fine, but I'll show you how to how to deploy this application and we'll install any dependencies. We'll set up a, a MongoDB database real quick in Atlas. And then once we do that, we need to set up the PM2 process manager to manage um, the running of the application. OK, so we'll get it running on whatever port 5000. Then we want to set up a firewall to uh, block any ports except the ones that we need, which are going to be the HTTP port, HTTPS and SSH. OK, and then finally, we'll set up and uh, uh, configure an Nginx server and we'll set up a proxy so that we can access our app through port 80, which is the HTTP port. All right. And then I'll also show you how you can add a domain through Linode. Obviously, this this process is going to be different depending on what you're using, what services. But I will talk a little bit about that afterwards as well. All right. So that's it. Let's go ahead and get into it. All right, guys. So this is the gist that I was talking about, and I'll have the link to this in the description. And it basically has everything, all the different commands that we'll be running throughout this video. So you can use this as a, as a supplement to the video. And then this tab is the MERN tutorial repository. It's the goal setter app that, that I did in the, the MERN series. Um, so that's what we'll be deploying. And then we're going to need a MongoDB database. So we'll just quickly set up an Atlas database later on. But first things first, we need to set up our server. Like I said, I'm using Linode, but you could use anything you want. Um, and this link right here is actually linode.com slash traversy, which, as I mentioned, will give you a hundred dollars credit so you can you know, follow along with this tutorial absolutely free if you want. So I'm just going to log in here with one of my accounts. And then in the dashboard, we're going to see uh, this is where you see your list of what are called Linodes, which are basically just Linux servers. And I want to create a new one. So I'm going to click this button here and you can choose from all different uh, all different distros here. I'm most comfortable with Ubuntu, so that's what I'm going to use. I'm going to use the 22.04 uh, long term support and then the region closest to me, I'd say, is New Jersey. And then as far as packages, I'm going to use the dedicated four gig. OK, so this is 
Uh, it has an hourly cost, but it, it caps off at $30 a month. And remember, if you use that link, you have a $100 credit, so you have a couple months. And then for the label, let's just change that. We'll call this YouTube dash, um, let's just call it YouTube dash Linux. And then the root password. So this is going to be the password for your root user. So let's go ahead and add that. And then for SSH keys, uh, I'm going to show you, show you how to set this up. You don't have to do this. You can just go with the password, but it is uh, a bit more secure if you set up SSH keys. And I just want to show you how to do it. So I do have one stored called Windows PC, but I want to create a new one for the, the machine that I'm on right now. Um, so if I click add an SSH key, I get this text box here and it's asking me to put in a public key. So you have to generate your keys on your, your machine. So I'm going to open up a terminal here. And before we generate a key, I just want to show you where they're stored. So they're typically stored in your home directory, whether you're on Mac or Windows, and then in your, uh, it's a hidden folder called dot SSH. So if I list out here, let's say for my home folder slash dot SSH, you'll see I have a couple here for GitHub. Okay, and it's going to be a private key. and a public key. That's what we're going to generate. Um, if I wanted to, I could use this public key, but I like to keep things separate. So what we'll do is let's go ahead and run SSH dash key gen. And then what that's going to do is ask us where we want to save it and what we want to call it. So by default, it's going to be like I said, in your users folder and then dot SSH. And by default, it'll call it ID RSA. Now I want to change that. So if, if you want to call it something different, you have to put the whole path here. So we're going to do, um, let's say slash users slash and then obviously your path will be different. and then dot SSH and I'm going to call it ID underscore RSA underscore Linode. All right. And then you can put a passphrase if you want. I'm just going to hit enter and not use one. All right. So now if I do an LS in the SSH folder, you'll see now I have a, a private key and then the public key has the dot pub. All right. Now the public is what we want to put in here. So there's a couple ways we can grab it. I'm going to use the cat command, which will just kind of print it out in the terminal. So I'll do cat and then let's do from the home tilde is just a shortcut for your home directory and then dot SSH slash ID underscore RSA Linode and then dot pub. Okay, make sure you get the public key. So it's going to start with this SSH RSA. We want to grab from there all the way to the very end. And we can just copy that right from the terminal and paste that in. And I'll just call this Mac Pro because that's the machine I'm on. So we'll go ahead and add that. Now you can see that it's in there and that's it. We just click on create Linode. And what it's going to do now is just go through and provision everything. Um, It usually takes 30 to 60 seconds. Um, so I'm just going to pause the video and wait until this says running before we move ahead. Okay, so now you can see the status says running. And what we have here is our IP address. We have our IP version four and six. And then to log in via SSH, we can do this. Okay, that will log in as the root user. And then down here, it's not available yet, but once your server is running for a little bit, you'll see some analytics here. You'll see some network stats, your storage, backups. So if you want to take uh, backups, you can get uh, an exact image of a certain point and then you can revert back to that exact point if you need to. And then there's all types of stuff over here, volumes, Uh, node balancers, firewalls, but we're not going to really get into Linode specific stuff because you could you could do what we're doing here on any any server. So let's go ahead and, and try to log in. So I'm going to open up, go back to my terminal here and you can see here the SSH root. So that's what we want to do is log in as the root user. So we'll do root at and then obviously your IP address will be different than mine. So make sure you put yours. So mine is seven nine one five eight. dot one oh two and you'll get this message the first time you try to log in just say yes or type in yes and it's going to ask for your root password that we just we just set uh, a few minutes ago so I'm going to add that I think that was it 
Yeah, so now we're logged in. And if you want to just use passwords like we just did, that's absolutely fine. But what I want to show you is how we can use our SSH key and not have to type in a password. In fact, I want to disable password authentication altogether to make it more secure. That way you can only you can only access the server from your client. So I'll go ahead and just clear this stuff up. And one of the first things I like to do when I set up a new server is just upgrade my packages. So if you're logged in as a, a, another user that's not root, usually you would do sudo. Um, since we're logged in as root, we don't have to. And we're going to use the we're using the aptitude package manager, which is uh, the Debian, uh, you know, Debian Ubuntu package manager. So we just do apt and we can install packages like this, like if I wanted to install curl or something. Um, so what we're going to do is just run at apt update and that's going to update our package lists to the most recent and tell us basically, you know, how many packages can be upgraded. And you'll see right here, 48 packages can be upgraded. So now I'm going to go ahead and run apt upgrade. And we'll say yes. And then this can take uh, like one or two minutes to do this. Um, so I'm just going to pause the video and I'll be back when it's done. All right, so now that that's all set, I want to create a new user. And you can see we're logged in as root. It says root at localhost, but you can also use the command who am I? And that will always show you who you're logged in as. So to create a user, we can just use the add user command and then whatever we want to call it, I'm going to call the user Brad and that will create a user. We want to add the password that we want to use. Okay, and that's going to ask for some some information, but you can just enter through all these. Yes. All right. So now we have that user. And if I do ID and then the username, it'll show me the user ID along with any groups that that user belongs to. Um, now, I want this user to to be able to run commands as with, with root privileges. So we want to put it in the pseudo group so we can do that by saying user mod. We want to modify this user and then dash lowercase a uppercase G. And then we want to put the pseudo group and then the name of the user, which for me is Brad. All right. So now if we do ID Brad again, it should say pseudo. All right. Now, as far as the SSH keys go, I want to be able to log in as this Brad user with SSH keys. And the one we added was for the root. So we actually have to add our public key for for this user, for every new user you create. Now, every user has a, a directory in the home directory. So we want to CD into slash home slash Brad or whatever, whatever you called the user. And then from here, we want to have a dot SSH folder just like we have on our client. So I'm going to make a directory and I'm going to call it dot SSH. And then we're going to CD into dot SSH. And then from here, where we want to put our public key is a file called authorized keys. So we can create a file in Linux with the touch command. So we're going to say touch authorized underscore keys. OK, so now if I do an LS, we should see that file. And now we want to edit that file. And I'm going to do that with a text editor called Nano. So I'm going to say Nano and then authorized keys. Whoops, authorized keys. And now I'm in that file. So I, and, and it's obviously empty because I just created it. Now to get the public key, I'm just going to open up a new terminal, just say new window here. And from here, I'm going to do the same thing where we use the cat command to get the key. So I'll say cat and then from the home directory. And remember, this is my local machine. This is not the server. So my home directory, I'm going to go into dot SSH and I want the ID underscore RSA underscore Linode and I want the public key. So we want to put dot pub. OK, then we can go ahead and just grab this. Just make sure you copy it correctly from front to front to back or front to end. So we'll copy that and then I should be able to just paste that in here. Yeah. And then we'll just go ahead and, and command or control X and then hit Y to save and then enter. All right. Then we can close this one up. So now we have the keys in in that file. So before we move on, I want to disable password login and this is optional. You don't have to do this, but it is a good security measure to take. So we're going to edit a certain config file. Actually, I don't need sudo because we're in root, 
but let's say nano and then the file is going to be in slash etc slash ssh slash sshd underscore config which is like the ssh config file and i'm going to page down here and i'm looking for that right there password authentication which is set to yes right now so i want to set that to no all right so we can set that to no and then there's also this right here permit root login so sometimes people will set this to no so that it's it's not even possible to log in as root but i'm just going to keep it at yes and let's do a controller command x hit y and then enter and now what we have to do is just restart the sshd service so we can do that with system ctl and we want to restart sshd okay so now we should be all set to log in as as brad with our ssh key so i'm going to go ahead and log out of the server with log out and now you can see i'm back on my local machine brad traversy at mac pro and now i'm going to try to ssh in but i'm not going to use the root account i'm going to use my new user my brad user so you're probably going to see this permission denied and when you get this i, I put this in the um the gist here so basically we have to run two commands one is to start up the ssh agent and one is to add the the linode key to that ssh agent all right so let's go back here and let's say we do this with eval and then uh, some back ticks ssh dash agent and then dash s and we should get back a process id okay that's not really important to us but that's what we get back and then we can do ssh dash add and we want to add let's see from the home directory remember i'm on my local machine here so home directory dot ssh and we want id underscore rsa underscore linode and that's our private key so it says identity added now let's try again to log in with the brad user and there we go so now we're logged in we didn't have to enter any password and you can see it says brad at local host local host is is the name um, that's configured with my server i can change that if i wanted to all right so let's clear that up and now we're we're in the server logged in as brad or whatever whatever you used so before we get our files onto the server to deploy we do need node.js if i do a node dash dash version we're going to see command not found because node is not is not pre-installed there are images that you can use with linode to get stuff pre-installed but i usually prefer to just start from scratch so to install node is obviously a little different than we would do on windows or mac because we don't have a gui right so we have to do it all from the terminal but it's it's not difficult at all it's basically two commands so the first one is a curl command and you can see this this deb node source this is for version 18.x so the latest version and just to show you where i got this from if we just search for node.js uh, install debian and click on this link you'll see all the different linux or all the different um, operating systems here and if you see, you can see this debian and ubuntu and then if you click on node.js binary distributions it takes you to this this readme file here and then installation instructions and it just shows you the commands for each version of node so obviously we want the latest version that's where i got this all right so i'm just going to grab that curl command and let's just copy that and we can close this up and then i'm just going to paste that in here put our password this is your new user password not the root all right so now since we did that we should be able to now just do um use apt so no uh, not node sudo apt install and let's just add dash y here and then node js so this will install both node js and npm if you see this screen just hit enter twice okay so now if i do a node dash dash version it'll show that if i do npm dash dash version you should see that as well 
All right, cool. So now that we've done that, we want to deploy this this goal setter app, this Mern tutorial repository. So what we're going to do is clone it with Git. Uh, and Git should already be it's already on the system. So if we do Git version, you should see that it is installed. And then right here under code, I'm going to go to clone and you could set up your SSH key on the server for GitHub, but I'm just going to use HTTPS. So I'm going to copy that that URL and then we're just going to figure out where we want to put this app on on the server. So right now we're in the our home directory, which is empty. Uh, so what I'll usually do is create a new directory called like sites. So we'll do that and then we'll CD into sites. And then from here we'll run git clone and then I'll paste in the link I just copied or the URL I just copied. And let's run that. And now if I do an LS in my sites folder, I now have the Mern tutorial so I can CD into Mern tutorial. And if I do an LS, we should see the files and folders. Now you have to go to the project and kind of follow the steps to to get going. Now, this is a Mern stack app, so we do need a Mongo uh, MongoDB database. And you can see it says rename the ENV example to dot ENV and add your Mongo URI. So the easiest way to create a MongoDB database is using Atlas, which allows you to create a, a, a MongoDB database in the cloud. So I'm going to go ahead and log in with an account that I just cleared up for this. I think it's this this account here. And I just cleared everything out. So if you don't have an account, just create one mongodb.com. And now I, it probably asks you to create an organization, which I already have and a project, which I already have called Traversy Media. And then we can create a database. So I'm going to say build database. And this is absolutely free if we use the shared account. So let's choose that. We're going to just leave AWS as the provider, cluster zero as the name and then create cluster. Okay, once we do that, we can just add a user. I'm going to say Brad one, two, three, four password. I'll do the same thing and click create user already exists. Oh, oh, wait a minute. Oh, I forgot I already had that user. Okay, we'll just just create a new user. It looks like I already have one. And then here, this is really important because we need to specify where we want to access the database from. So we're using a server that's in a cloud environment. So I'm going to choose that. And then right here under IP access list, we'll click configure. And then we just want to grab the IP address of the server. Okay, we want to let we want to let Atlas know that this it's okay to use um, this database from this IP address. And you could add a comment in here if you want, add entry, and we should be all set. If you're working from your local environment as well, you might want to add your current IP address, but I'm not I don't need that. So I'm just going to click finish and close. And we'll click go to databases and then this animated border. This is just telling us that it's setting setting everything up. This can take like one or two minutes or one to three minutes, as it says. All right. So I will be back when this is done. Okay, so now what we're going to do is click on browse collections and you would see any data in your database here. Obviously, we don't have any, but I'm going to click add my own data because I want to create a database with a specific name and I'm going to call it goal setter. All right. And then the collection name, if you want, you can add a collection. We'll create the goals collection and this isn't mandatory, but I just want to specify a database name. Otherwise, it'll just create uh, it'll create one called test and it'll use that. So let's click create and then we're going to go back to overview and then click connect. And then from here we'll say connect to our application and we want to copy this string right here. Now there's a couple things that we need to change here. So what I'll do is just open up. Uh, let me see. I'll just open up a new sublime text file. Doesn't really matter. And I'm going to paste this in. And there's just a couple things that uh, we want to change here. One is going to be the password. So this brackets password, you want to change that to the actual password. And then after the slash, we want to put the, the name or like I said, it's going to use tests. So the name is goal setter and that should be good. So now that is what we want to use. So we want to whoops oh shit. We want to copy that. 
and we can close this up. And then if we look at the GitHub uh, readme here, it says that we need to add it to the, the .env. Okay, we have to rename env example. Now we don't see env example here because it's hidden. It, it starts with a dot, so it's a hidden file. But if we do ls-a, we can see hidden files and you can see env or dot env example. So we can rename that with the move command mv. So we'll say mv and then dot env example. And we want to rename that to just dot env. So now if we do an ls-a again, we have that .env file, and that's what we want to edit. So let's say now we have to do sudo, so sudo nano.env. And now a couple things we want to change. First is going to be the, um, the environment here. I want to change that to production. So development, we're going to change that to production. And then we want to put our URI here. So let's get rid of that and then we should be able to just paste right in. Okay, there we go. I know that looks a little weird, but it is there. If I come over, you'll see that the whole thing is there. So now we want to command or control X, hit Y to save and enter. And now that should be all set. So we need also need to install our back end dependencies and our front end dependencies. So that's pretty easy. Let's go ahead and right now we're in the root. So that's where we want to run npm install or npm i. And that installs all the back end dependencies like Express and Mongoose and anything else that we used in the API or in the back end. And then after that, we can CD into the front end and install the front end dependencies. So let's do that CD into front end and run npm install. Now, the way that this works, let's just take a quick look at the code in the, the back end server JS. That's the entry point on our server. So if we're in production right here, it's going to check and see if we're in production, then it's going to look for the, the react build folder, which is going to be in front end build. Because, you know, when you build a react app, you run NPM run build and it creates all your static assets in that build folder. So what we're saying here is if, if we're in production, and we hit any route, we're going to uh, we're going to display the index HTML that's in that build folder. So we're not running like the react dev server or anything in production. That's that's for development. Um, if we're in production, we're just we're using the built assets. So we do have to run npm run build from the front end. So the dependencies are installed. Now we'll just go npm run build. Make sure you're in the front end on your server. And that will create this um, this front end build folder and then the server will look for that. Okay, so creating optimize and th there's so many different ways to do this. You can set it up so that this runs automatically. I mean, what I'm showing you is just kind of the bare bones um, just so you can learn that and then you can look for, you know, more complicated stuff later. Or more complicated setups, I should say. Once you get everything set up, it's easy. I mean, once we we do all this, all we really have to do is is push to our repo and push to production. So let's clear this up now. If we cd dot dot back into the root of our app and we run, let's say npm start, we can see that it's running on 5,000. And if we were to go to just going to copy the IP address. Obviously, yours is different. And then if we go to um, that, if we if we don't put in the port, it doesn't work, right? Because that's port 80. But if we do colon 5000, there it is, there's our app. Now, there's a couple problems here. One, we don't want users to go to port 5000 and, and just pretend this is a domain. You can add a domain easily. But we don't want users to go to 5000. We also don't want to have this running like on our client. If I stop this, you know, if I stop this here and I reload, it doesn't work. So that's where PM2 comes in, which is a proce uh, process manager for our application. All right. So to set that up, we want to install it globally. So let's say sudo and then npm install dash G for global and then PM2. Okay, so basically this is going to handle starting, stopping, restarting, um, showing us the logs, all that stuff. 
So to start up our application, we simply do PM2 start and then our entry point, which is backend slash server dot JS. All right. So now you can see it has an ID of zero. The name of this is server, right? So if we want to like uh, stop it, we would do PM2. Actually, I'll just show you. We can do PM2 and stop and server. And now you can see the status is stopped. So I'll start it back up PM2 start server. Now it's online. And if I go to local, uh, not local host, this IP 5000, then it works. But we still have the issue of this being port 5000. So that's where Nginx comes in. Um, but before we install and set up Nginx, I'm going to enable the firewall because we don't even want people to be able to go to port 5000 or any port aside from 80, 443 and 22 because that's HTTP, HTTPS and SSH. So we already have a firewall uh, with Linux Ubuntu and it's called UFW. So we can say sudo UFW enable. And we'll say yes to that. So now the firewall is active. If I come back over here and reload, even though my app is running, it's not going to work because we're not we can't access any ports right now. OK, so everything is closed. So to open the ones we want, um, we can just we can put in either the port or we can put in the name of the service that runs on that port. So, for instance, we can do UFW allow and then SSH. So that will add that rule or open that port. We also want HTTP and we also want HTTPS. OK, so now what we need to do is install Nginx because that's what we want to use for our web server. We want to have a proxy that allows us to access our application that is initially running on 5000 to access it through port 80, which is the HTTP port which is the, the, the default port when you don't add, you know, colon, whatever. So let's install Nginx. We'll say sudo apt install Nginx. Yes. OK, so that is oh, we just want to hit enter here twice. So now it's installed, but we have to configure it. So there's a file we need to edit. So we'll say sudo nano and this is going to be etc slash nginx slash and then sites dash available and then slash default. OK, and we're just going to page down here until we see this server block. So server and then some uh, open parent uh, curly braces and down here you'll see this location block and also server name. And now later on when you add a domain whatever domain you choose, you want to put here. So I have a domain, for instance, called app 002.dev. So I'll put that here. We want to do that. We also want to do the www version. So app 002.dev. OK, now as far as the location, this block right here, uh, let's just get rid of all this stuff. And then in that gist, I have uh, I have what you need to put in here. So let's go over to the gist. And we already did all this, this right here. So we want this proxy pass and that's where we put the localhost 5000. That's where our port is our app is running and we want to add this the rest of this stuff for our proxy. So what we can do is just copy this, everything that's inside of that that location and then let's come back over here and we should be able to just paste that in between the curly braces. And we'll just bring whoops, we'll just bring that back. All right, so that should do it as far as this file goes. So let's go ahead and command or control X hit Y and enter. And now we just want to restart Nginx. And if you want to check the configuration, you can do that with nginx t and it says that the syntax is OK. The test is successful and now we just want to restart nginx. We can do that with sudo service um, nginx and then we just want to restart. 
All right, so we should be good if we go back over here and we go to just just the domain, not port 5000. There it is. Okay, so our application is now deployed and you can add a domain name through Linode or through whatever you're using, but let's go ahead and just register a user here. We'll say John Doe John at @gmail And let's submit. There we go. Welcome, John Doe. Just ignore that thing. Goal. We'll just say goal one. There we go. We can add a goal. We can remove it. We can log out. So now it's deployed. Now, as far as domain names, if you are using Linode, you can go to domains. And I actually already have. to here but actually I won't delete it but if you click create create domain you just put in your domain and then you can choose insert default records from one of my Linodes and then you can choose the Linode you want to use that domain with all right then it will show up here and if you click on it it'll show you all kinds of stuff like the name servers the uh, a records all that stuff um actually this isn't for that you know what I'm just going to delete this and delete that and say create domain I'm going to use that you just need to enter an email address too and then I'm going to choose the YouTube Linux now these name servers ns1 through ns5.linode you would put in your domain registrar so for instance I use namecheap So you would just log in and find your domain which is this one right here click manage and then right here it says name servers I could say custom DNS and I could add in NS1 so we actually need 5 so we would do that and then let's see that would be 2 oops 3 4 and 5 and click the check and then that's going to take uh, a little bit to propagate as you can see here up to 48 hours so you might have to wait a little bit but it should uh it should connect and then as far as SSLs you could like from name cheap you can see I have a ton of them here um you could purchase one and you could install it or an even easier way and a free way is to use let's encrypt And I actually included the commands down here for that as well. Okay, so you should be able to run these and and create an SSL absolutely free. But yeah, I mean that's it. Um there's a lot more to, you know, deployment and DevOps, but I'm not going to obviously get into it in this video. I think that this is a good it gives you a good understanding of the basics of, you know, how to set up a server and so on. Um you can get into like Docker and using containers and in Kubernetes. You can see there's actually a uh you can use Kubernetes with Linode as well. Um you can set up databases as well. We use something different like we used a third-party database with with Mongo Atlas, but you can set it up through your terminal or you can even do it through the interface here. All right guys, so hopefully you enjoyed this and learned something from it and I'll see you next time.